Hello, my name is Judge Tom Grady and I'm the presiding judge of the 22nd Judicial Circuit for the City of St. Louis. The purpose of this video is to help you better understand and perform your job as a juror and your part in the administration of justice. I believe you will find this video to be a good overview of your jury service. I know some of you are asking yourselves, why me? And I'm sure that more than one of you would rather be someplace else. What I would hope, however, is that you stop for a moment and appreciate the role that jurors play in the protection of the liberties that we enjoy in our country. Liberties that men and women put on uniforms for and which you put on jury badges for to defend. While jury service is a duty of citizenship, I also hope that you will consider serving as a privilege. A trial by jury is one of the foundations of our rights as citizens of this country to ensure that neither life, liberty, nor property can be taken from any of us without due process of law. Citizen jurors stand as the cornerstone of our system of justice, guaranteed by our Constitution. This right to serve on juries was given to us through the history of Old England, where people died and fought to have the right to serve on juries. Do not feel alone in your service. This year, over five million American citizens will play this important role in the judicial system by serving on a jury in their own communities. More than 20,000 of those people will be serving right here in the city of St. Louis. If you should have any questions or problems after viewing this video, please contact the jury supervisor's office. They can assist you with anything relating to your juror service. On behalf then of all the judges of our court and all of our wonderful court personnel, I want to thank you for your participation. I hope your experience is a rewarding one. Hello and welcome to Jury Duty. I guess you're probably wondering just how you were chosen to be here. Actually, your name was taken from a list of eligible citizens from driver's license and voter registration departments. Then a summons questionnaire was mailed to each of you, whose name was randomly drawn from the list. When the questionnaires were returned, they were reviewed to establish the eligibility of prospective jurors. The number of individuals summoned is based on historical trends and the daily request received from the various court divisions. In the city of St. Louis, prospective jurors are assembled twice a week, the first group on Monday, the second on Wednesday. Since you, as the juror, are in effect an officer of the court, it's requested that you dress appropriately. Shorts, tank tops, t-shirts, and other informal attire are not considered suitable for courtroom settings. If you're having a problem finding transportation to jury duty, you should consider public transportation. The court will provide passes to each who choose to ride Metro Bus or Metro Link to and from jury duty each day you serve. Bus schedules are available in the jury assembly room, or you can call 231-2345, that's 231-2345 for Metro information. Jurors who wish to drive can park free in the Keel Garage, which is located at 15th and Clark. The jury supervisor's office will validate your parking once each day, so be sure to bring your parking receipt with you. You will be asked to serve on one trial unless dismissed sooner. The average trial lasts about three days. Missouri law requires counties, or in this case, the city of St. Louis, to compensate jurors. This fee will not be a lot. It is intended, though, to defray your meal expenses. In three to four weeks, a check will be mailed to you. A yellow juror badge was part of the original summons you received in the mail a few weeks ago. You will usually be called by your badge number, since names are often similar or mispronounced. It is necessary that you wear the badge at all times so you can be identified as a juror by courtroom officials. If you forgot or lost your badge, a replacement will be made. Be patient. It takes a little time on check-in day to get the replacement badges printed for all of those who need them. You'll be called when your badge is ready. Panel of 30 jurors for the trial this morning. When a case is ready to be tried, the trial judge calls for prospective jurors. This group of individuals selected randomly by the computer and is referred to as the jury panel. 1478. If you are selected to be part of a panel, your number will be called 
and you will be directed to take a seat in a designated section. After the panel is assembled and its members seated, sheriff's deputies will escort you to the appropriate courtroom. Before your jury service is complete, you will probably be selected for at least one jury panel. Occasionally, some prospective jurors are not selected for a jury panel. If this should happen, please do not feel that your time was wasted. It wasn't. The vast majority of cases are settled without a jury trial. The fact that jurors are assembled and ready to serve is what frequently prompts the parties in the case to reach a settlement or a plea agreement. For those who have not served as a juror before, I'll explain the two different types of cases and the roles of the people with whom you will come in contact. In civil cases, private citizens or businesses use the court system to resolve disputes. The individual who brings the suit is referred to as the plaintiff. The defendant is the individual or business that is being sued. In criminal cases, action is brought by the state against those persons charged with violation of criminal laws, such as drug offenses, murder, rape, assault, or other crimes. In both types of cases, the judge is responsible for the conduct of the trial. In jury trials, he or she instructs the jurors on the law as it applies to each particular case. The responsibility of the deputy is to maintain order in the court, follow instructions from the judge, and attend to the jury. The clerk is responsible for all documents and physical evidence that are entered into the trial. The clerk also swears in or administers an oath to the jurors, all witnesses, and the deputy sheriff at the time of deliberations. The court reporter produces a certified word-for-word -word written record of the trial when there are attorneys who represent the plaintiff and the defendant. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we expect that the evidence will be that on January 1st, my client, the plaintiff, was involved in an accident on Tucker and Market just outside the courtroom here. Anyone who has knowledge of particular facts pertaining to the case may be called upon to testify. Please raise your right hand. You do solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give in this cause. Be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. They're referred to as a witness. Our responsibility as a juror is to respect the rights of each person and to base your verdict upon the evidence and the judge's instructions pertaining to the law. A trial by jury begins with the jury selection process called vaudire, which is an ancient French phrase meaning to speak the truth. Prospective jurors are questioned by the judge and the attorneys to determine 12 individuals who will be fair and unbiased in the case. The information provided when you completed the questionnaire helps speed up this process. Was that uh, a plaintiff's verdict or a defendant's verdict? After the questioning, the lawyers and parties will make their selection of 12 people to serve on the jury. If you are not selected as a juror, you should not be ashamed or embarrassed. It simply means that the lawyers felt that it was proper and lawful that you not serve on this particular case. In some instances, there may have been more than enough jurors on the jury panel. When the selection examination has been completed and the number of jurors needed has been met, the judge orders the clerk to swear in the jury. At this time, would the jury please rise to be sworn? Once the jury has been sworn in, jurors virtually become judges of all the facts and evidence in the case. Your duty is to act fairly and impartially. Now, let's take a look at the trial procedure and what you should expect while serving here on the jury when the trial begins. My client suffered severe injuries for which we'll be asking money damages. The attorneys usually make their opening statements detailing the information that will be presented to prove the case. Opening statements are each attorney's view of the facts in the case. It's very important that you understand opening statements are not to be considered as evidence. What is evidence? Well, evidence can be statements by witnesses, exhibits, and objects used to establish facts of the case. It may be a document, gun, tool, or photograph, or some other tangible thing supported by a witness's testimony. Witness testimony itself is evidence. In fact, most evidence is witness testimony. You must pay close attention to each witness when testifying. Listen carefully, not only to what is said, but also observe the manner in which it is said. Pay close attention to the expressions used by the witness. It's your responsibility to sort out the important facts from all of the other evidence presented. 
There's also another serious responsibility of the juror, confidentiality. It's important that you remember that all of the information pertaining to the case is confidential during the trial. The judge will remind you throughout the trial and prior to each recess not to discuss anything that has occurred in the courtroom with anyone, including fellow jurors, until you retire to the jury room for your deliberations. Even talking with your spouse about the case can be an act of contempt, punishable by fine or imprisonment, and may cause the entire case to have to be retried. Please make sure that while you are in the courtroom, elevators, corridors, lunchroom, or anywhere that you do not talk with lawyers, their clients, other jurors, or anyone interested in the trial. It is in your best interest to avoid any appearance of improper conversation. If someone purposely tries to talk to you regarding the case, it's your responsibility to notify the judge about that incident immediately. Although it is your duty as a juror to hand down a verdict that you feel is accurate, it would be a violation of your jury duty to conduct your own investigation of the case. You should not visit the scene of the events referred to in the case or make any attempt to question witnesses. That's the complete responsibility of the attorneys. Nor should you conduct your own research via the internet or other sources. Sometimes during the course of a trial, the lawyers may approach the judge to hold private conversations. These conversations are not for you to hear because they concern technical points of law and courtroom procedures of which the judge alone must decide. To resolve such matters, the judge may excuse the jury or recess the court. Sometimes the judge may need to go into the chambers to confirm a decision by researching the law. These procedures are quite necessary to ensure a fair trial for all parties involved and not used to intentionally delay the case. The defendant ran a stop sign and collided with my client. After all the evidence from both sides has been introduced, the lawyers will sum up their case for you. These closing arguments, like the opening statements, are not evidence, but only the opinion of the attorney presenting the case. During the closing statements, each lawyer will ask the jury to reach a verdict in favor of their client. When weighing the evidence, there's a difference between the degree of proof required to establish a criminal case and that of a civil case. The judge will explain to you the proof required and provide detailed instructions on the law as it applies to that case. You need to pay close attention to the instructions and apply the law to the facts that you've determined. You must accept the law exactly as it is given to you by the judge. The judge is the final authority on the law. To reinforce what we've just talked about, here are the important things to remember. Listen to both attorneys' opening statements and closing arguments. Listen to all testimony. Look at all exhibits. Listen to and remember the instructions on the law from the judge. Decide the facts fairly and impartially. After your instructions from the judge have been given, the deputy will escort the jurors to the jury room for deliberations. Your first duty will be to elect a foreperson. The foreperson presides over the deliberations to maintain an orderly flow of discussion and ensure that each juror is given an opportunity for personal expression. The foreperson also conducts the balloting. First of all, he's, present, yeah. he's presenting a witness that is not telling the truth. During deliberations, there may be differences of opinion and possibly arguments. Remember, your fellow jurors deserve your respect. Even if you disagree, treat your fellow jurors with the same courtesy you expect from them. Keep your mind open and listen to others. Then, form your own opinion and vote the way your intellect and conscience tells you. When a verdict is reached, the foreperson tells the deputy that a decision has been made. Do not tell the deputy or anyone else what decision has been reached. Court is then reconvened and the foreperson delivers the verdict to the court on behalf of the entire jury. You should feel confident about your vote in the verdict and feel good knowing that you played a part in the most important civic responsibility of all, jury duty. So if you feel that jury duty will be an inconvenience, think again. And remember, America has conducted trials by jury for over 200 years. Do you know why? Because when responsible citizens serve, justice works.